Welcome to our Tech Explainer video. Today we're tackling an intriguing challenge in distributed systems. Our viewer has a college assignment that involves running a Java application as a socket server with multiple clients. The goal? To synchronize a request counter across different server instances on a network. Let's dive into the details. Welcome back to another technical video. Today we're going to be going through your question, going through some of the answers, and hopefully finding that solution. Guys, remember to stay just a little bit crazy and work through to that resolution. Now, let's get started. To synchronize a request counter across multiple Java server instances, we need to ensure that all servers can communicate effectively. One approach is to have each server maintain a shared state. A simple solution is to implement a mechanism where each server can send its current counter value to the others. This can be done using sockets or RMI, which allows for remote method invocation. For the implementation, you can create a method that updates the counter on all servers whenever a request is processed. This ensures that the counter remains consistent across all instances. You can hard code the addresses of the backup servers for simplicity. This way, each server knows where to send its counter updates without needing to discover each other dynamically. Finally, consider implementing a master election algorithm to determine which server will be the primary. This can help manage the request counter more effectively and ensure that one server is always in charge. Let's now look at a user-suggested answer. To synchronize a variable between Java instances across a network, consider using a shared database or an event bus. If that's not feasible, servers can communicate directly using sockets or UDP multicast. For direct communication, there are several architectures. Master-slave, where one node is the master, everyone to everyone, where all nodes connect to each other. Daisy-chain, where nodes connect in sequence. And ring-network, where each node connects to two others. In a practical scenario, using a shared cache or clustered database is ideal. If you only have one backup server, it can connect to the primary server to receive updates via sockets. Remember to implement Keep Alives and Reconnection logic to maintain the connection between the primary and backup servers. If this is for a networking course, they might expect you to use UDP multicast depending on your network environment. Let's now look at another user-suggested answer. Synchronizing a variable across Java instances in a network is a classic distributed systems challenge. The best approach involves having servers communicate with each other. However, complications arise with latency, downtime, and network partitioning. To address these issues, a consensus algorithm is necessary.
Paxos is a well-known consensus algorithm, but Raft has gained popularity recently as an alternative. Let's now look at another user-suggested answer. To synchronize a variable between Java instances across a network, one effective solution is to use a vector of counters, with each server maintaining its own counter. Each server increments its counter and broadcasts the vector to others. The total number of requests can be calculated by summing all elements in the vector. This approach utilizes a conflict-free replicated data type. For strict consistency, you must synchronously replicate the new value before responding to the client, which may impact performance and availability. When it comes to broadcasting, you can choose any algorithm. For a small number of servers, a full mesh topology works well. For larger numbers, consider using ring or star topologies. Let's now look at another user-suggested answer. To synchronize a variable between Java instances over a network, one effective method is to use UDP broadcasting. Each server broadcasts its maximum value on a UDP port. If a node's current value is less than the received value, it updates its value by adding one. If not, it ignores the value and broadcasts its own larger value. This method works best with a 2 to 300 millisecond gap between client calls and assumes any server can act as the primary as determined by a load balancer. UDP is stable within a local area network and is widely used for this type of communication. Let's now look at another user-suggested answer. To synchronize a variable between Java instances across a network, you can choose between speed and consistency. If consistency is your priority, consider a synchronous approach. Here's how it works. First, server A receives the initial request. Then it connects to servers B and C to get their current counts. Next, server A calculates the maximum count from its own value and the values from B and C. It then increments this count and sends the new value back to B and C. After closing the connections, server A replies to the original request with the updated maximum count. Now, all servers are synchronized and ready for new requests. If you have access to a shared database, this synchronization process becomes much simpler. And that's it guys. I hope those questions and answers really helped solve that solution for you. If it did, please hit subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Now, until your next technical video, I'll be here. Have a good one.